uh, uh, specialty and uh, fear and uh, obsession is with small probabilities. We don't quite understand small probabilities. Let's discuss a point. Uh, you are in all the events we just saw should happen every 10,000 years, 100,000 years, 10 billion years. Uh, some uh, faculty here in this university had an event and they said, oh, it's a 10 sigma event should happen every, uh, I don't know how many trillion years. So do you realize uh, the, how worrisome uh, it is when someone makes a statement like that should happen every 10,000 years, particularly when the person isn't even uh, 2,000 years old, you see? So the fundamental problem of small probabilities is that rare events, they're rare. <laughs> Okay, so when someone makes a statement, this in financial markets should have happened every 10,000 years, visibly uh, they are not making a statement based on empirical evidence, okay, or computation of the odds, but based on what? Some model, some theory. So the lower the probability, the more uh, theory you need to be able, you know, to, to, to compute it, okay? Typically, it's something, mechanism called extrapolation based on regular event and you extend something to what we call the tails. So my telescope problem is as follows. Consider the following. The smaller, the less you observe it in a sample. Therefore, your error rate in computing it is gonna be very high. Actually, you know, the error rate you're computing a very, very small probability, your error rate is monstrous and probably, you know, is very, very small. So, but the problem we have now is that we don't care about probabilities. Probabilities are something you do in classroom. What you care about is what you're going to use the probability for, which is the, what I have here called the lambda, the impact of the event, the effect of the event, the consequence of the event. So you're interested in a pair probability times impact, okay? So notice something is that the vicious aspect is that that pair probability times effect pi lambda, as probability becomes smaller, the impact is bigger. A thousand year flood is going to be definitely vastly more consequential than a five year flood or a uh, hundred year flood. So uh, uh, so you care about that and, and that pi times lambda becomes a lot more stochastic when pi becomes small. In other words, very, very consequential events we know absolutely nothing about, about and they matter a lot, particularly in some domains in which the probabilities don't fall very quickly. So illustration. And this is what got me into this obsessive disorder, is when I was a trader in during the stock market crash of 1987, and I was a derivatives trader, okay? And the beauty of derivatives, uh, uh, the beauty or, or the, the ugliness of derivatives, is that they compound every single error you can have because it's a square. It pays you a higher order function of, of, um, of the random variables. And you see here, these are the variations of a derivatives portfolio over 20 years one day represents 97% of the variations. And that day is not forecastable, okay? So that's the problem with small probabilities. There are domains in which small probabilities are everything, very, very small probabilities. And we know very little about them. What are these domains? I, there's a, a regular classification. I won't get into the details of how these things are made, but there's type one I call something that reaches central limit uh, in real time. And type two, it doesn't reach it in real time. The classical distinction is between uh, things they call uh, Gaussian or Gaussian family and things they call power law families. I, I, it doesn't work very well. It, it's much more effective to have what we call in real time, no real time central limit. In other words, the rare event in type two will dominate the properties regardless of what. Now what worries me I'm here, uh, you know, at, at uh, the epicenter of education, uh, economics, okay, Harvard. And uh, there's something in the foundations of economics that's completely bogus, completely. 
And let me tell you what it is. It's not the, the you know, that people are rational, not rational, people keep bickering about the wrong problem. It's the fact that at the center of the techniques used in econometrics, in statistics used in, 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 in the center, there is this assumption that doesn't seem to hold uh, uh, theoretically, I mean philosophically, this a priori defaulting to the type one is, is completely arbitrary, is unjustified, and the second one empirically. And people tell me, well, we have techniques to adjust for fat tails. Fat tails mean the contribution of the rare events. So I did the following, is not only we cannot predict rare events, we, we cannot even figure out what role they play in the data. And this graph shows you the following. I took every economic, major economic variable I could find data for that covered 40 plus years, okay? from stock exchange rates, stock markets, all, all, everything that had a, a lot of data. Everything I could find, 20 million some pieces of data. And for most of these variables, one day in 40 years can represent 90% of a measure called kurtosis. Kurtosis tells you how much something is not Gaussian. Okay. In other words, you don't even know how non-Gaussian we are. That is a severe problem. The implication is that, well, for example, take the stock market. The stock market crash of 1987, okay, one day in 40 years represent 80-some percent of the kurtosis of that measure. That kurtosis tells you how much something is not Gaussian. So we are in trouble, very severe trouble, okay. If, even if you used another method called power law, which is beautiful on paper, much more rigorous scientifically, much more, uh, 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 much more uh, adapted to our world, we still have another problem, is that it's beautiful on paper, but when you come to calibrate, small differences in calibration lead to massively different probabilities in, for rare events. Very, very small, minute differences in calibration. And the errors we have in measuring what these tails are, are monstrous. So, measurability. Number one, that what we call norm L2, we should, nobody should use, when you have open-ended payoff in economics, nobody should use at all something called variance, least square methods, standard deviations, uh, sharp ratio, uh, portfolio theory, even the word correlation. These don't work in domains of type two, okay? They don't work, okay? We don't know how to measure, particularly when you're prone to, and that explains why uh, the system collapsed, because banks were using, I spent 15 years fighting risk management methods in banks. They're all based on standard deviation and portfolio theory, because they said there's some Nobels given to these names. Okay. Second point, in social science has made a distinction that I don't think very rigorous between what they call Knightian measurable risk versus non-measurable uncertainty. Several problems. Number one, when you talk about uncertainty, you don't say measuring, measuring risk. You don't measure risk like I'm measuring the stable, okay? I'm estimating something that happen, will happen in the future on one hand, and in the other one, I am measuring a, a certain, uh, uh, you know, uh, entity, physical entity, and actually the error of type one and type two. The other problem is that all risks in the tails, all small probabilities are not measurable, regardless of whether you know what, or you know what's going on or what's not going on. So this brings me to uh, the consequences, visibly forecasting. I, I don't know uh, if you guys are aware, but uh, you can check all forecasts in economics and uh, they don't work. Why don't they work? Because of these rare events. Because unless you, of course, don't have exposure to rare events, which for these random variables is not the case.